Hi, I'm Mary Harding. Welcome to my website, maryhardingjewelry.com. Today we're going to be watching me demonstrate making some ceramic beads out of um, porcelain clay. The beads you're going to be seeing will be um, will turn out sort of like this close up here. These are bisque beads that um, have been fired once and we'll be making um, these kinds of beads using clay and I'll be showing you some techniques to make to give you um, nice round beads with good clean holes as they are in this picture. These have not been glazed yet and that's a whole other um, demonstration I'll be doing at a different time. The um, materials that we'll be using today will be um, some sponges as you can see here there's a big art sponge there and a smaller sponge over here that's an elephant ear sponge that does a nice job of cleaning up some of the um, marks on the clay we'll be using the needle tool which is um, right here and it's a metal tool that's good for scoring the clay we'll also be using a ruler to measure out the clay so that you can make beads the same size or and have them incrementally um, increase in size. We'll be using this type of um, bamboo skewer as you see here and suspending the beads on the skewer in a simple cardboard box. As you can see that the materials here are not expensive. You can find many of them in the dollar store or just around the house. Also be using a bowl of water to wet the skewer for when we want to put the hole in the bead, which is another use of the bamboo skewer. It has quite a few uses in the use of when you're making ceramic beads. Today we're going to be using... First thing we're going to be doing is um, conditioning the clay by whacking it on the board. And if your clay is moist, you might want to have a cloth to... Um, absorb some of that extra moisture. Now this clay seems to be pretty about just the right consistency. Then we're going to take it apart, make it into a ball and roll it out into a log so that um, we can cut up the log and have a way of measuring the size of the beads. We're going to start out with try and make your log as even as you can. See this one's a little bit uneven but about the same all along and like this one up here, and then you can take it up to the ruler, move that off with a little water, and the hole's not right in the middle, so we'll try another one. Um, now we're going to try another one here. My hands are a little wet to help with this clay that's drying out as I demonstrate. It was a little on the dry side to start with, so it isn't a serious matter. You can deal with that. Now, um, getting that clay smooth. I'm going to take another skewer and wet it the tip and hold the clay between my fingers like that. Hold the ball of clay and twist the, the um, skewer until I feel it on the other on my finger. Wet it again, insert it into that little tiny hole and twirl it again and then we get a nice clean finish to that bead and let it dry over here on the rack. I'll be putting it over here to dry and taking another skewer over here. This time I'm going to show you what happens when you don't um, take the time to go both directions on the bead for the hole and you'll see that it doesn't look as nice. I'm getting the bead a little wet because the clay is drying out. Now I have it if you can't get your bead dry, you can always take it down on the board too, that will work. So now we've got the skewer, I'm going to put it in here, hold it like this between the fingers, twirl it up. Now if you were just to keep going, make a bicone bead, a bicone bead has got two points on it, it's sort of like two cones that are joined in the middle. This is a sort of a 
special secret trick that I learned from the uh, Andy at the Beads of Clay um, group on the internet at her website, Mystic Spiral. Now this, um, so you start for this bead, round bead that I've already made, and then you get a piece of plastic, like an old TV, DVD cover or a um, tape cover box, and it has to be flat and plastic and hard, and you put your bead down on the surface and you hold the cover parallel to the board you're working on and just make round circles and you can watch this bead form as you do it. Now I went around enough times and now you can see how to clean up your beads after they've dried. Now when you make the beads in the beginning you're going to put them on those skewers and let them dry. After about half an hour you want to take them off the beads and set them somewhere where they will be able to continue drying. But if you leave the bead on the skewer too long, the water will absorb the beads. The skewer will absorb water and swell, and the beads will shrink, and you won't be able to get them off without breaking them. Sometimes, if that happens and you do forget to take them off, you can dip the bead in a cup of water, and it will um, loosen the bead up, kind of like when you have a ring on your finger that's too tight. If you wet it or soak it, it'll undo. Now, so once those beads are dried, this is what they're going to look like. I'm going to show you one here. See, there's a little, still a little edge on there from the clay that didn't smooth out quite from the skewer. So what we want to do is you don't, whatever, when you bisque a bead, what you see is what you get. So if there's any roughness on the bead, it will be hard as a rock when it comes out of the kiln. So you want, but now when they're in this um, greenware stage, this you can easily change the shape of the bead. I like to use a sponge so I don't have a lot of clay dust in my studio or in my lungs. So that's why we're doing it with a sponge today. And you'll get a wonderful finish with a sponge. So there's this little lip here that's sticking up and it doesn't look quite right. There are a few little fingernail marks or wrinkles in the clay. And we're going to get all those out with this sponge. And we're just going to take the sponge across it like that. Now see there's a mark there. We're just going to run it back and forth until it disappears. You see it's disappearing. And then we'll go over here onto the other side. And again it's a little uneven so just run it across kind of in a parallel fashion. And it smooths it right down. And we'll go over the rest of the bead. Make sure it's smooth. Then I'm going to take one of the skewers that I haven't used before. Dip it in some water and just check out that hole, make sure it's nice. And then I'm going to take a bead reamer, which is, um, this one has some diamond chips on it, which you can also use these once they're bisque. But you want to make sure that you have a nice hole in there, because when you go to fire these with glaze, you're going to need to get them onto the rod of the bead tree. And um, you want to have a reamer that's about the same size as that rod. So that's how what I'm doing now. I'm cleaning that hole out, making sure it goes through well. There's the bead.